Mr. Speaker, the committee to wait upon His Excellency, the Governor. Mr. Speaker, members of the legislature, and invited guests, it is my privilege and honor to announce that the Governor of the great state of West Virginia, the Honorable Jim Justice, is present to address the Joint Assembly. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure and honor to introduce to you the Governor of the great state of West Virginia, the Honorable Jim Justice. Now, unless y'all are all wanting to be here all night, you've got to quit this clapping so much. <laughs> That's all there is to it. Thank you so, so much, Speaker Armstead, President Carmichael, members of the Board of Public Works, Justices of the Supreme Court of Appeals, Senate Minority Leader, and I, Prezi Oso. How about that? And I, and I got that first time. Pretty good. Roman said I did pretty good with that. House Minority Leader Miley. And all our great legislatures. Tonight's a really important night. You know, I want, before we get into the meat and potatoes of what I have to say, I want to recognize a couple of people. These four people came with our great speaker, Armstead. These four people are principals that suffered through a thousand year flood. You know, I firsthand know what the flood was all about. And it was beyond belief terrible. I don't know where they are, but if they could stand, Mike Kelly, the principal of Herbert Hoover, Missy Lovejoy, the principal of Elkview Middle, Cindy Cummings, the principal of Bridge Elementary, and Vanessa Brown, the principal of Clendenin Elementary. Your courage goes way, way, way beyond being unnoticed. You know, it took wisdom and strength and courage to some way, somehow, battle back. We've got a long ways to go, but that's what we do. There's another group here, it's called KVC Health Systems. And there's a CEO that's a national CEO. 
His name is Jason Hooper. And let me tell you what they're doing. They're going to bring a college basically for foster kids to Montgomery, a place that really needs us, needs our jobs, needs hope. The great Gordon Gee and WBU have been terribly instrumental in this. Wherever you are, Jason and your team, please stand as well. Stay with me. Isn't this place reverent? Hallowed ground. Tonight, I'm going to do the best in my ability to deliver a speech that I think is phenomenally important. There's no question there's been speech after speech delivered here. I am telling you, I can't possibly imagine that there's a time as dire and a time as important as tonight. Now, let me tell you, there's no question we've been 50th forevermore. We're better than that. Now, like it or not like it, we're dying 50th. This is the most difficult and the biggest depression that we could ever possibly imagine. The biggest of the biggest. Now let me tell you this, on a little bit of light humor, but there's a fellow, his name is Ricky Mokel. He's a comedian. He said as a child, he was hyper. And his dad gave him a shovel and he used to love to dig. And he would dig and dig and dig and dig and dig and dig to the point in time where he couldn't get out of the hole. And then he said, what's the use? There's no point in digging anymore, is there? Well, he says it to be funny because then he turned and he said he and his dad had a password at that point in time. And when he would get to where there was no way he could get out of that hole, he would go, help, help. And his dad would come and get him. Well, trust me, we got to quit digging. We are such in the hole that we got to quit digging. We got to quit working against one another. We've got to some way hold hands with each other and run across the finish line together. We got to have new ideas, and I'll get to those in just a few minutes. The other thing is just this. You've honored me beyond belief. You elected me as your governor, a person that had never been a politician, in the wake of me running as a Democrat at a time when Donald Trump won our state by 17,000 million percent. Now, there had to be a reason, and the reason is just as simple. And if I make some people mad, I just make them mad. But the people knew that it didn't matter to me. It didn't matter to me if you were a Democrat, a Republican, an Independent. All that mattered to me was one thing, and that was that you're West Virginians, and I'm a West Virginian, and I just want goodness for our state. I've said it over and over and over. Now, there'll be somebody that will be on some witch hunt to try to beat on me about something. But I want again to announce to the world in every way, I, nor my family, want anything from this other than goodness for you and our state. Now, let me tell you, you've trusted me with your vote. I absolutely need you now to trust me with your voice. 
Now, you don't see any teleprompters here. You know, a lot of news media said, you know, he's folksy. Well, I don't know that I know how to spell that. <laughs> but there's sure no teleprompters. But you see, my definition of that would be plain talk. And that's what I think West Virginians want to hear. Now, the truth is, it's time for gigantic decisions. The past four years, no matter how hard we've tried, we have lived off rainy day and we've lived off the low hanging fruit that we could cut away. We have. We've cut probably $600 million of waste and we've cut the rainy day fund into half. Now, this year, right now, you're gonna to have to cut the rainy day fund 123 million more dollars. No way around it, right now. What are you gonna have? 500 million. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? You're faced with a $500 million hole in the bucket. And the next year it's a $700 million hole in the bucket. If you cut rainy day more, the rate holders, the people that, are, that create our rates for our bonds are gonna to torpedo us. We got issues, we got real problems. So, I want to tell you this. I don't mean this in any bad way because I'm the one that signed up to run for governor. But we got a 18 carat dog's mess, don't we? We do. I didn't create the dog's mess. I have inherited the dog's mess. And I am telling you, you have to have real direction and real ideas and real cooperation together to be able to get out of this. Now there's two ways, two ways you can get there. And you gotta forgive me, I'm not nervous, but I just sweat a lot. <laughs> a lot. And I got a bad knee, and man does it hurt. But there's two ways you can get out of it, or a combination of ways. The first way is to just cut more, cut more. Well, let me tell you just this. Just think about this just for a second. Are you willing, are you willing to eliminate all of our state parks? Are you willing to eliminate all of our colleges and universities other than Marshall and, and WVU? Shut them down. Are you really willing to close our tracks, to not have dogs, to not have horses. Are you really truly willing to gut our seniors? Are you willing to turn our backs on our, on our vets? I can't get there. I can't get you there. Because you know why? Because at the end of what I've just said, you're halfway home. What then are you going to do? What is West Virginia going to become? A nuclear waste site? Is it going to become the place where our nation sends all of its prisoners all the time? Are we not better than that? Now let me give you just this scenario. Here's an analogy. You've got a factory. We're the factory. You've got a factory. The factory's got $100 million in the bank. The factory's $200 million upside down. Think about it. How are we going to fix it? Here's what we can do. Take the $100 million away from the factory, just like that. We've got $100 million upside down. Then I'll tell you what let's do next. Let's cut 25% of the people off. And then I'll tell you what else let's do. Let's cut the wages of everybody else there by 20%. And you're still not there. So I'll tell you what let's do. Let's sell 75% of the equipment out of the factory. And then we in here will go home and say, we did it. We balanced the budget. And you know what will happen? The sun will come up tomorrow and we'll say, holy horse whatever. <laughs> the factory is dead. The factory is gone. 
So, that's where you are. Now, I'm a business guy, and I know this stuff. Now, let me just do this. Let me just tell you this. I truly believe that any cuts that are out there that somebody can bring me that's not going to just stifle us as a patient, I'm for. I am delivering to you $30 million worth of cuts. It won't hardly move the needle. I am telling you our decisions are not tough decisions, they're catastrophic decisions. Now I really want you to pay close attention because I truly, from the bottom of my heart, hate tax increases. I hate them. I really do. But I want to show you the most painless way that I think you can get out of this mess. Now I'm going to come around here and write. Here's what you got to do. You got to cut all that we can possibly cut. I've got to have everybody in this state pay a half of a penny in additional sales tax. There's no way around it. I've got to have you pay, instead of $30 in DMV fees, I've got to have you pay 50. The other thing is this, in trying to be fair, in trying to just be fair, the people are here, here's your people. Here's your, here's your people. Here's your businesses. I've got to have our businesses, there's lots of different ways to look at this, pay two tenths of 1% in a tax that would be equivalent to a B&O tax. It is a tax that Ohio charges 25% or 25, 25 hundredths, we would charge 20. And the other last thing that I'll talk to you about is I've got to have 10 cents a gallon on gasoline. Now I'm telling you, if you don't do this, you're dead. You're dead beyond belief. Now, let me go back over here and come back. I, well, I'm, before I go, I'm going to stay with you a second. On these two right here, this one and this one, I want to sunset them. Three years. I think if you do what I am, I am trying to propose to you to do, you can get rid of this and you can get rid of this in three years. Now, this deals with your roads. And this does too. Now let me tell you this. I said a minute ago, I am adamantly against raising your taxes. We have got to find a way to not completely kill the patient. Now look what happens. Three years, this goes away. Three years, this goes away. I'll tell you about this in just one second. I want to tell you one last thing. My goal, Jim Justice's goal as your governor, is to do one thing, and that is to be the eighth state in this country with no income tax. None. Now that's, that's my goal. I hate like crazy to deliver to you what you have to do. That's my goal. Now, remember I said what I said about a half a penny. What would you rather do? Would you rather have your school plummeted even more? Your seniors just forgotten? Your vets forgotten? Your park's closed. Fairmont State shut down. On and on and on. 
or would you be willing as a peoples to say, I'm willing to pay a half a penny more and I'm willing as a business to step up and pay two tenths of one percent because I love West Virginia and we're going somewhere. Now listen here. If you pay ten, if you pay ten cents or more for gasoline and a little bit more on your DMV fees, that's going to turn into this. Here's what it's going to do. It will turn into two point eight billion dollars. Now just stay with me. I have four wonderful people back here, and I want you to understand wholeheartedly what your 10 cents and almost nothing in DMV fees that haven't been raised in 40 years. Think about it. Almost nothing I am asking you to do to turn into that. And then let me show you what we can do. Y'all bring this on down. Now with us tonight is Kevin Cool or Cole, Andy Estep, Brooke Rumball, and Cody Webb. Brooke and Cody are students studying engineering at Marshall and WVU, and Andy and Kevin already work with us in highways. If you'll do this, you see those jobs? You see them? We can let every single road job that is on the books for one to three and three to five years tomorrow. We can let them all tomorrow. Think what this would do. Just imagine what it'll do. I'll tell you what it'll do. It'll create 48,000 jobs in our state. 48,000 jobs. It'll complete the network that we have got to do. It will make tourism explode in this state. Honest to Pete, this is the 800 pound gorilla in the room, not me. Now, there's two other things I want to do, and I'm going to sit because I'm sweating too much. I want to bid every one of these road jobs specifically uh, labor intensive. And you know what I want to do from that? I want it to be our training ground. I want it to be our apprenticeship program. I want it to be something that will absolutely put our displaced miners that find a job here or our young people that learn how to do something here. It's an opportunity. Now let me tell you what else I want to do. For all the su successful bidders, I want to charge them a 5% construction, severance, whatever tax it may be, whatever you want to call it, to the successful bidder only and my bet is people like me in business will sharpen your pencils like crazy and it won't cost us the 5%. It may cost us one. And then you know what I want to do? I want to pool that money. That money right there is $2.4 billion. If I could let every job tomorrow, it would amount to $120 million a 5% pool that I would have. And then you know what I want to do with it? I want to fix the drug problem. If we don't fix the drug problem in this state, it will cannibalize you. <laughs> we have to have stiffer laws. There's no question whatsoever, a drug pusher that rolls in here, you guys can roll. A drug pusher that rolls in here from Detroit and selling drugs, he ought to know that this is not going to be a fun program. 
if we catch him. We absolutely have to have a pathway to get our people that are hooked on these terrible drugs back into the community of the workforce. We have to do something with all the prescription drugs, no question whatsoever about that. But we have to have treatment facilities too. I would propose today, if we do this and those dollars flow, I would propose immediately building a facility in Charleston, one in the Eastern Panhandle, and I know the veterans are waiting on the dollars to come from the firework tax and everything to build their facility in Beckley, and I'd like to skim off some of this money to help them be able to get that facility built. Let me go to education. Guys, I'm a coach. I'm in the school all the time. We've proven how to be dead last. If you'd have gone around with me and had these round ta table discussions and listened, just listened. You see, that's what I did. And I just listened. You got a bunch of really, really sad, unhappy camp campers. So, I think we need gigantic education reform. Here's what I would do. I would submit a bill, and I will immediately, to eliminate any of the unnecessary bureaucracies that we have. We have got to return education back as much as we possibly can to a local level. I have put in my budget a 2% raise for all classroom teachers, and I am ashamed. I'm ashamed that we can't do more. Now, as far as testing, we are testing our kids to totally to death. For what? I mean, here's the bottom line. Think about it. If we were knocking it out of the park, you see, I'm all results oriented. If we were knocking it out of the park, you could argue with me we're doing the right thing. For crying out loud, we're dead last. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this out. We gotta be doing something wrong. That's all there is to it. As far as the testing goes, I'm, I am going to propose we throw smarter balance in the trash can and we go to an ACT testing. Let me show you this. Think about A through F for our schools. We do it on a bell curve. Think about this. Who in the world comes up with this stuff? <laughs> These get an A. These get an F. All the big meat and potatoes get a C. And we call out to the world and say, come to West Virginia. Our schools are mostly all C's. <laughs> I don't get it. That's got to go. A through F is gone. Now, there's a beautiful lady here somewhere. Her name is Tony Poling. She's our Teacher of the Year. If she would stand, she teaches at Fairmont State. Also, wherever they are, the beautiful lady Leah Curry, 
who is the president, the West Virginia president of Toyota, and the gentleman, Jim Fawcett of Highmark, is here somewhere that made all that possible as well. Thank you. Let me tell you this, I've said throughout the campaign, I said education can be a revenue producer for us and everybody looks at me like, well, how in the world, there's no way, there's no way. Everybody wants to go where your kids are going to be educated the best. Businesses want to go where your kids are going to be educated the best. We've got good teachers, we've got low crime, we've got good people. For crying out loud, we handcuff them in every way coming or going. We got to stop that and listen here. Maybe it's a twist of words on revenue producers, but if we could create an education mecca in West Virginia, honest to pe people would come and you couldn't beat them away. It would be a revenue producer. Now, I have to say, Jim Justice is no fan of consolidation. Again, I'll just tell you this, and I'll ask you, are we this bad? Are we this desperate? You know, tell you what we could do. We could close every school in the state to save us some money, Except we could have one, and we could have just one somewhere close to Charleston, and we'll bus every kid four hours, no more than four hours, one way. We're not that bad. We just have to have ideas, and we've got to have hope. Now, I truly mean this. One of the flood-ravaged towns that I truly believe is coming back and I can see it just like I can see it tomorrow. I hope and pray that we end up with a school in Richwood. Now, let me tell you this. Our veterans are phenomenally important. They've given everything to us, haven't they? Everything. Do we really take care of them? I mean, for crying out loud, we can't even maintain their cemetery. We've got to do better. We have to do better. Now, I'll be asking the legislator, legislation, legislature to approve the increasing of our Garvey capacity. And this one, before you go, oh no, I want you to listen. I'll be asking the legislature to raise our tolls on the turnpike a dollar. Now before you go crazy shooting at me, let me just say this. I want, I want through your DMV fees, I want to charge everybody within our state eight bucks, eight dollars. Then I want you to drive on the turnpike or whatever road that we would choose to toll for free. So I want you to pay eight bucks and I want you to drive on our turnpike, wherever it may be, for free or whatever road we toll for free. You see, 77% of our money is coming from out of state. If we could raise it and make yours as West Virginians free, other than eight bucks. And you may live in the Eastern Panhandle and I would say to you, we need you to come and visit Princeton at some point in time. <laughs> now, if you come for your eight bucks, we're going to give you a 50% discount on the tolls because you're going to pay nothing. And by the time you go through 333, 333, you're going to feel like you got a real bargain.
And I'll tell you just this. Did you see all those highways? Did you see all that? Well, I will promise you there will be something that will be in your neighborhood that will be told as well. As we go forward, there's going to have to be something in your neighborhood that will be told. And then the people from Princeton can come and visit you. <laughs> and they can come for free too. Now, I truly believe that we ought to tear severance tax on coal and gas. You know, it's just as simple. When our coal companies are really hurting, and I know a lot about this, when they're really hurting, we've got to step up and help them. And at that point in time, we probably have to step up and lower the severance tax. The same way with the gas. But I am telling you, I am not a hog. I eat too much, but I'm not a hog. If we have the bonanza that I think is in front of us with coal, especially metallurgical coals, what if, what if I were just to tell you just this? Think about this for a second. If coal, <clears throat> If coal's $35, whoever's mining that's losing money. Lowering the, sell, the severance tax on that to 2% or whatever you want to do, okay, I'm good. There's got to be a sweet spot to where we're back to five. What if it goes to $200 a ton? What happens? $200. I know this. There's no way that your cost, of anybody's cost, is going to be greater than $80. At this level right here, anybody's profit is $120 a ton. Listen, I'm a grain of sand in the coal business that I've been in, a grain of sand. And if we mine two million tons and we make this kind of money, you, we make $240 million in a year. We don't need to make that much money. At this point in time right here, this severance tax needs to be 10%. All it would do was lower the profitability to $110 a ton. All I'm saying is just this, like it or not like it, we have had our resources extracted from West Virginia over and over and over, and at the end of the rainbow, here we stand. You're $500 million upside down. We can't have it keep going on. We can't be a third world country. You can't do that. Now. Tourism. Tourism is so important to our state. We can knock it out of the park back double, triple. We probably need to reorganize the entire tourism department. There's ways to do that. And the other thing, you just got to simply put more money in it. We better find a way to market ourselves. I've said it a million times. I said it in the inaugural speech for crying out loud. Every time you turn the TV on, it says, come to Michigan. Every time. Well, I said uh, in the inaugural address, I said, who in the world wants to go to Michigan? <laughs> I mean, really? Well, you know, what if I called up tomorrow and said, I'll tell you what let's do, let's get a bus and let's go to Detroit. <laughs> but do we market us? We don't. We don't. We've got to do that. Now, let me tell you, and I'll be quick because I know you're tired of listening to me. Coal has been so vital to us, it's been unbelievable. We should never forget who brung us to the dance. We should try with all of our soul, with all in us, to try to help get our miners back to work.
There are other things. Natural gas just fell out of the sky on us, didn't it? We need to do everything we can to exploit that to make it even better and better and better and better. You know, there's issues within natural gas. I think it's called joint development or lease integration that they really want. And I can't possibly within me see why not? What's wrong with that? Why not? Now, we can help that industry. Listen to me on this. There are other things. I will be submitting with Senator Capito and Senator Manchin immediately. And I think that there's a real shot. I will be submitting whatever the form of a bill may be to some way, somehow try to drive furniture manufacturing, flooring manufacturing, cabinetry back right in our lap to West Virginia. It, it can truly be done. We've got to do it through an environmental subsidy. That's what has to be done. You see, I'm the agronomy end of our ag stuff. I know about trees. I know about how, all, how they eat all the carbon. And I know how when we take a piece of wood like this to a dry keel, the carbon is right here. And I know when the tree falls on the ground, and eventually the carbon will be released back into the sky, especially if you have a fire. And I know we only cut one third of our growth in West Virginia. We are the perfect candidate for what President Trump wants to do in bringing manufacturing back to the United States that today, <laughs> today, all of our furniture manufacturing is in Vietnam, China, and Mexico. I love Vietnam, China, and Mexico from a distance. <laughs> I want stuff for us. Now, I've got to say this about President Trump. Many of you would wonder, but uh, I am really good friends with the Trump family. And I truly believe that Donald Trump will do all he possibly can as our president to help West Virginians. He will. He's called me all kinds of times and his son Eric has called all kinds of times and now Don is probably gonna come and wanna go turkey hunting with me. Now, not Donald, because Donald's not a turkey hunter. But let me tell you, he truly, he truly really identified with our miners, and he understands the blight, and he's a friend. If we'll give him a chance, he'll really try to help us. Now, as we're winding down here, I would say there are certain things within government consolidation that we can do. There's no question, I get it, I get it, I get it. We need to watch every penny to try to save every dollar, on and on and on. I mean, I've already started this, and for crying out loud, I drive my own vehicle. We eliminated all the vehicles in my, in, in my little world. You know, we're going to try to get rid of some of the state's aircraft. We're absolutely, right now, we've identified 207 vehicles that we can basically get rid of. And what I want to do is line them up in front of the Capitol and have an auction and get rid of them. <laughs> we can't forget agriculture. Agriculture, let me tell you, furniture manufacturing, it can help us it may be two years away. Agriculture can help us maybe two years away. That's why I said a little while ago that 800 pound gorilla is sitting right in your face right now. When I bond that together, the gas tax and the DMV fees, I've got to go to a vote, a vote of the people. I've got to have 90 days after you approve it to go to a vote. 
I am begging the people to call you and drive you crazy to get to that vote because we have to do that. We got to do that and do that right now. Now, I believe, and I've, I will do this immediately, I will employ some person, and this, I, I, gosh, I can't imagine being called this a waste czar. But I'll have him absolutely dig into every agency known to man and try to find any excess monies that have been shoved away and hidden, and I'll have him look, and I'll have him try to find. Now, let me just give you my philosophy of reg our regulatory agencies. My philosophy is just this. You know, I've had the great gift to be able to hire so many good people. Our cabinet choices and the people we've surrounded ourselves with, we didn't care if they were Republicans or Democrats, independents, they're really good. They're really, really good. I told the people at the DEP, I told Austin K. when Austin said to me, he said, what do you really want to see happen? The list could be a mile long, couldn't it? A lot of people would say to Jim Justice, Jim, write a job description of what you do. Well, I could write and write and write, couldn't I? But the bottom line is just this. See, the right person's in the right job and they're motivated. That's what Jim Justice does. Right person, right job, and they're motivated. I told Austin Cabron and I said, Austin, we have people come from everywhere with any kind of business request in, under the sun. A lot of times our inspectors show up and they show up, and I hate to say this because you're going to probably think, boy, has he really lost it now. But they show up with a t-shirt on and a pair of old jeans. They maybe haven't shaved forever and they got a badge in their pocket. Now listen, I think they ought to look like something. And the other thing, I, and, they, and they will look like something. Or we'll have them tending to Grizzly Adams. But the other thing is just this, no matter what the request may be, I think that the first words out of their mouth should be, we're going to try with all in us to do what you want to do. Now, did you understand what I said? What I said is just this. So many times our regulatory agencies absolutely no matter what on earth we try to do they're there to tell you no they're not there to tell us no now i underline 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 nobody loves the outdoors as much as me nobody loves waters as much as me we are not going to break the law we are not going to do anything to damage the environment to the very best of our abilities or our waters, but we are not going to just say no. Now let me end, and you're saying thank God. Let me end by just saying this, please, not only you, all the viewers that are out there, listen to me. This situation is beyond dire. These people are trying. I've had the great opportunity to meet with Mitch and Tim and others and all kinds of Roman and the other Tim and on and on and on. They're good people, they're good. They're good people and they want to try to help just like I want to try to help. But I am telling you to the best that Jim Justice could possibly tell you, you elected me to try to get us out of Ricky Mokel's hole. That's what you elected me to do. New ideas, aggressive ideas, bold ideas. 
We're dying. We are dying. It is so blooming bad, you can't possibly imagine it. Now, there's a way out. There's real prosperity in front of us. There's a way out. I would tell you a long, long time ago, Frankenstein, he used to walk through the streets like boom, boom. And I always thought, if you got caught by Frankenstein, you deserve to die. Now, I would tell you just this. If we don't do anything, and all we do is kick a can down the road, and all we do is fight, then we deserve to die. I really believe there's a rocket ship ride right at our fingertips. A ride like you cannot possibly imagine. I would say to you, let's don't just try to figure out how to just get by. Let's cannonball right in the middle of the pool. We can do this. We absolutely can do it. Now, I would say to the outside world, Call all your legislators. Call all your in-laws and your outlaws and your neighbors. Call them all. This is a pathway. I've given you a real pathway. And I hope that you'll seriously consider it. Now, it was folksy. It was just plain talk. That's all I know. We have an incredible incredible obligation and an unbelievable opportunity. Now, I would say with all these great people, all of you, together with this great body, you can have my heart and soul. I will work with you with every ounce of being that I have. Together, this great body, and myself, and this isn't a very great body, but all of us will get there. Now, let me tell you just this, and then I'll end. My basketball teams, a lot of times they say two words coming out on the floor, and they scream them. And do you know the other night, Tom Brady, led a comeback that was unbelievable, didn't he? Unbelievable. No one could have possibly imagined it. And you know what he did? He took the Super Bowl trophy. I watched him do this. He stood on that podium and he screamed, let's go, after he had won. Well, I'd say to you, let's go. God bless you all, thank you. Thank <laughs> you.